Well, conference, uh, what a result. Now, I know. I've, uh, I've received the memo. We mustn't be complacent, and there's to be no gloating. We show humility in our victory. But you've got to admit, to see Wales qualify for the World Rugby World Cup <laughs> quarterfinals, fantastic. <laughs> So thank you to everyone who has come up to me here in the last three days to declare that they're now supporting Wales from here on in. And that's the beauty, isn't it, of being part of this family of nations that is our United Kingdom. It, it gives us options. And it's amazing the number of people who've discovered Welsh ancestors since the last Saturday night. So it, it's been quite a year for us in Wales and for the Welsh Conservative Party. Now many of you know that because you were there. You helped us. You helped us win in North Wales, in Mid Wales, in South Wales, right across the great nation of Wales. You were there, helping to secure the best conservative result in Wales for more than 30 years. So I'd like to start simply by just thanking each and every one of you, Diochen Vauer. Those of you who got stuck into that street fight in Cardiff North, and what a br brilliant result we had there with Craig Williams, in a seat that Labour thought they had in the bag long before the campaign had even begun. Those of you who helped our team in North Wales prize the veil of Cluid from the grasp of the Labour Party with Dr James Davis, the local GP born and bred in his community, who understands more than anybody just how important a strong NHS is, and just how unacceptable the standards are that the Welsh Labour Party say people in Wales have to put up with. And then, and then deep in the heart of rural Mid Wales, Chris Davis, not just nudging Brecon and Radnorshire across the line for Welsh Conservatives, but wrestling that seat from the Liberal Democrats with one of the largest swings seen anywhere in the country. What a massive result that was for our party. And then there are those of you here today who helped pull off what the Labour Party didn't believe was possible. The Welsh Labour Party who take their seats for granted and who even on polling day were out there trying to mock our campaign. Dream on, they said. Well, we weren't just dreaming. We had been working night and day, week after week, month after month to win a seat deep in Labour's heartland a seat which had never been conservative and which Labour had held continuously for more than 100 years. But ladies and gentlemen, when you have a candidate like former police officer Byron Davis, anything is possible. And yes, so from right under their noses, we got rid of Labour from the Gower too. <laughs> but conference, how arrogant is it for any party to assume a seat will always belong to them. But that's what we're up against in Wales, where the stuffy Welsh Labour establishment take their community and their voters for granted year after year, election after election. Well, Conference Wales has had enough. Because I travelled through the valleys during the election campaign, through those core Labour strongholds, and not once, not once did I see a Labour poster or a Labour candidate out there in their community speaking to the people they claim to represent. You wouldn't have known there was an election happening. And I believe Wales deserves better than this. Those working class communities deserve better than this. Communities that were the cradles of the Industrial Revolution, built on the back of effort and industry, with a heritage of self-reliance and standing together, where people built libraries to educate their children so that they could have better life chances and opportunities than they had had, where they built memorial halls to bring their communities together. These birthplaces of Welsh socialism actually built on deeply conservative values. Well, they've been abandoned by the empty shell of a modern Labour Party that has nothing to say and nothing to offer. Those communities that aspire for better, that work for better and deserve better. But we understand that you don't back workers by ducking the big challenges of our age. You don't back workers by loading more and more debt onto future generations, by trapping communities in cycles of dependency, by setting your face against business, the very ones who create the jobs and the wealth. 
or indeed by spitting in their faces. Because whatever venom and bile we've seen outside the entrance of this conference venue this week, it has nothing whatsoever to do with the needs, the aspirations and the ambitions of workers and their families in Britain in 2015. The truth is, conference, the truth is that Labour abandoned the working classes a long time ago. When we came into government five years ago, there were 200,000 people in Wales who had never worked a day in their lives. Now, what a tragedy for those individuals and for those communities. There were 100,000 children in Wales growing up in families where no parent worked. That was Labour's legacy. And who marched for those children? Where were the voices on the left chanting out in the streets against that? The conference, we were determined to change that. And we make no apology for fronting up to the big challenges that face our society and our economy. We make no apology for taking the difficult decisions which have led to unemployment tumbling all across Wales, where a record number of people going out now to work each day. Young lads and girls getting their first opportunities on the jobs ladder. And yes, 60,000 more children in Wales growing up today, seeing, seeing a mum or a dad go out to work. Conference, that's not just economic recovery, that's social transformation. <laughs> because it's true, Conservatives haven't just become the true party of working people. We've always been the true party of working people. And that's the reason I was attracted to our party in the 1980s in Wales, at a time when Labour sought to entrench class divisions and was a vehicle of protest and divisiveness with zero vision for enhancing the life chances of the most vulnerable in our communities. No, instead I was drawn to a party that stood for opportunity, that didn't care what street you grew up on, what kind of fam family background you had, what your parents did for a living. A party led by Margaret Thatcher that understood what Labour will never understand. That yes, it's true, you don't just have to take what you're given, but you also don't extend opportunity and social mobility by locking down the poor into worklessness, welfare dependency and indebtedness. <laughs> and conference, I remember the 1980s in Wales, and I know the kind of politics that the new leader of the Labour Party is trying to recreate in Britain in 2015. And there's nothing kinder or gentler about it. And so as a Welshman, I say to him, you may want to bring back the politics of the past, but the people of Wales are looking to the future. And we've got no desire to see the wounds and the divisions of previous generations becoming the defining feature of politics today. So to him, the message from Wales and from this conference is clear. Your politics aren't welcome here. And you know, he, he may think that he's coming home to real Labour when he visits Wales, where he can see a Welsh Labour government that's banned academies, banned free schools, abolished the right to buy. But he'll also see a Wales that is letting go of Labour. As people all across Wales say, enough is enough, we can do a lot better. And we can and we will do it a lot better. One of the enormous pleasures I've had as the Secretary of State for Wales in recent months it was spending some time with the Welsh Rugby Squad. And when you're at their training base in South Wales and you see them working ferociously with one goal in mind, you see this amazing huge slogan across this training hall. And it says, here is where we build our victories, it says. The values of ambition, hard work, meritocracy, excellence, achievement, if only they were the values that characterized the Welsh government's delivery of public services. But that's what socialism does, conference. And I deserve that we believe that Wales deserves better. Conference, Labour has no divine right to rule in Wales. And that's why I've made it my ambition to prise open the iron grip of the Labour Party on Wales. It's why I returned to Wales when it was declared a conservative free zone after the 1997 and 2001 elections to stand for our party in the community in which I grew up. And it's why I'm going to keep pressing on, fighting to take back more ground from Labour. 
And I'm delighted to work with such a fantastic team at the Wales office, who, a team who share my vision of a stronger Wales, a more confident Wales, more outward looking. My superb parliamentary undersecretaries, Alan Cairns MP and Lord Bourne, both of them with huge experience from their days as Conservatives in the Welsh Assembly. And I'm also supported by my parliamentary private secretary, David Morris, who is our very own Northern powerhouse. Conference, we made great strides last May, but we're going to need your help again next May uh, to increase the size of the Welsh Conservative group in the Assembly so that we can give Wales the change of administration that it deserves and a new Welsh First Minister in the shape of Andrew R.T. Davis. So it's, it's my great pleasure now to welcome onto the stage my good friend and leader of the Welsh Conservative Group, Andrew Artie Davis. So thank you, Diochen Vauer.